So I recently made a video on the state of affairs about Signberg stopping VST2 support in their host applications. And you can check out that video in the link in the description by the way. But this morning I got a very exciting email from Soundtoys about the fact that they ported all of their plugins to VST3 format and that you can now try them out yourself in a public beta program. So let's have a look and let's go! So in my recent video about Steinberg stopping VST support in their host applications, I already mentioned that Soundtoys is one of the companies which is not providing VST3 versions of their plugins yet. But they already mentioned that they were currently working on it and that they would be available in a public beta soon. Well, that's now. Let's look at the email that I got. So over here is the announcement in the email that there's a public beta for VST3 of all the Soundtoys plugins. And if you go to their main website, you can also see that they're featuring it quite big on the main page. So let's look at the details. So we are excited to announce the immediate availability of Soundtoys 538, which includes support for VST3 as a public beta for macOS and Windows. So if you're a Soundtoy user, you can access the beta plugins at the public beta forum. We'll have a look over there in a minute. And you can create an account if you don't already have one and then try out these plugins. And you may think, now, why is this such a big deal? But there's really three reasons why this is a big deal. One is that currently, if you're running Cubase 12 on an M1 Mac in native mode, you already no longer have support for VST2 plugins. So if you were used to using Soundtoys plugins and they're great plugins, and a lot of people are using them, you already are not able to use those plugins anymore. The only way to use those plugins is by using Cubase 12 in Rosetta, the legacy mode. And in that case, you will still have support for VST2 plugins but it does have performance impact on the M1 Mac. Now reason two why this is such a big deal is also for Windows users. It's much, much better to already start limiting yourself to using VST3 plugins because probably in the next version of Cubase or in any of the other Steinberg applications, VST2 support will stop. So your projects with VST2 plugins in there will not load them anymore. So for that reason, even if you're not an M1 Mac user, it's probably very wise to start using VST3 plugins. And it looks like this is now also possible when you're using Soundtoys plugins. Now, reason number three why this is such a big deal is more the technical story of VST3 being superior to VST2 for a lot of reasons. But some of the major ones are that VST3 plugins do not cost any performance if no audio is passing through them. They're basically being shut down if nothing is playing on your track. And another major benefit of VST3 plugins is the fact that they support side chaining. So altogether, very good news that Soundtoys is finally moving to VST3 now. But let's have a further look at the beta program. Now they mentioned that we know this release is eagerly anticipated, especially by our Cubase 12 users on Apple Silicon, for the reason that I just mentioned. And there's also a bit of a disclaimer, if you are not in need of VST3 support, we recommend that you wait for the official release. Yeah, so you have to remember a beta program is a testing program meaning that all the plugins have not gone through the full testing cycle yet, but they're basically releasing it to a bigger community of users now as part of the testing to see whether they run into any unexpected behavior which they didn't find themselves during testing. So there is a certain risk associated with installing these plugins. For example, if you have to finish work, then it might be better to wait for the official release, but at least it's good to know that it's coming and that we're one step closer to having these nice plugins in VST3 format. Now they mentioned to visit the beta forum for more details, including download links of the 538 public beta installers. Now you have to register to get an account there, but that's free of course. And if you do, you end up on this forum where you see a number of forum threads with people already reporting some bugs or behavior that they don't expect. But the top pinned post contains information about the beta program. And you're seeing that the forum is very slow at the moment. I think that's probably because of the major interest in this and that everybody's trying to download these versions of the plugins and access the forum for that. Now, since this is part of a testing program, they tell you over here how to report bugs, including all the information of your host, etc., etc. Now, there's also some known issues that they're reporting here. And one of them is actually very important because that's one thing I was wondering about. How about all my old projects with VST2 versions of these Soundtoys plugins in there? If I open them in a future version of Cubase, I don't know, maybe Cubase 12.5, for example. And if Cubase 12.5 doesn't support VST2 anymore, will my project still open and use the VST3 version of the plugin instead? Or will my old project just open without the Soundtoys plugin in there? And fortunately, they have a solution for that because if you look at the known issues, they're reporting VST2 
2 to VST3 session migration using Reaper is currently not working. Some hosts support a feature of VST3 that allows VST2 versions of the plugins to be automatically replaced in a session with VST3 counterparts if they are installed. Reaper supports this, but has what we think is a bug and will not detect plugins that have hyphens in their name as being replaceable by their VST3 versions. So if you're using Reaper, there might still be a problem, but this feature works fine in other hosts like Cubase 12. So that's really great. Let's have a further look in the forum. Now for this new version, they also have the ability for the installer to select which plugin formats you want to install instead of making you install all four. If you want to install this version of the plugin for testing, I would say do not install the VST2 version so that you only have the VST3 version so that automatically when you start a new project, you will only have the VST3 version to insert in your new project. And you can also verify that old projects still open, replacing the VST2 version with the VST3 version of the plugin. Now, and finally, there's the section go get plugins. So if you click on this link, you end up over here, which has individual installers for the plugin separately or a big installer for all SoundToys 5 plugins. If you want to have the Mac version, you just select Mac over here. Now, currently I still have work to finish on my Cubase 12 instance, so I'm not going to install these versions and take part in the testing, but I'm very much reassured that I at least will be able to run these plugins as soon as my Steinberg software no longer supports the VST2 format. So if you have installed the VST3 versions already and are trying them out in your projects, let me know how your experiences are so that others who are watching this video can benefit from your experience. And if you want to have some more background information on Steinberg stopping VST2 support in host applications, I made a separate video about that that you can check out over here. Have a look, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.